Imagine that you're an explorer and you're sailing around the world and you come across this tiny island that no one's ever found before and you find an organism there that you've never seen before. And you want to figure out what kind of organism it is. Well, if you're a scientist, then you have a tool to help you figure out what kind of organism it is or what its name is. And that tool is called a dichotomous key. So a dichotomous key um, is basically just something that scientists use to identify the name of an organism. And the die at the very beginning of that word, die means two, and so it's set up as two choices at a time. In fact, it's kind of like a big game of 20 questions. If you've ever played um, 20 questions, like on a long road trip or something like that, basically it's a game where one person picks some random thing and the other person tries to guess what it is. And you start out by asking broad questions, like is it a person, or is it a place, or is it a thing? And depending on their answer, either yes or no to each of those questions, you're going to ask more specific questions. Like, if they say, yes, it's a person, you might ask, well, are they still alive? And then your questions are going to continue to get more and more specific. Or if they said, yes, it's a thing, you might say, well, is it um, bigger than a bread box? Or is it smaller than a bread box? To try to figure out the size of the, um, the object. And so you start out with broad questions and you narrow it down slowly until you get to the thing that they're trying to get you to guess. So that's how dichotomous keys work. Now, <clears throat> they work on two choices at a time. The first thing you're going to need to be able to do with a dichotomous key is to read it. So this is how you read a dichotomous key. Here's an example of a dichotomous key for you. This is a dichotomous key of protists. And so we're going to use it to identify this organism. So imagine this is the organism you found. You're trying to figure out what its name is. Now this is a microscopic image, so this is smaller than something you could see with your naked eye. Um, so this is a very, very small organism. Keep that in mind. So we'll start out by answering the first set of questions. Number 1A says, contains green pigment. So you're basically asking yourself, does it contain green pigment? And the picture obviously is blue, so the answer is no, it does not contain green pigment. So that tells us, if you follow 1B on a cross, it tells us to go to 3. So we're going to go on down, skip 2, and go to 3A and 3B. And we're going to ask ourselves, does it have cilia or flagella, or does it not have cilia or flagella? So let's go back to our picture. Cilia and flagella look like hairs um, on the surface of the organism. Now this organism has sort of arm-like projections, but it doesn't have any hairs. So we're going to say no, it does not contain cilia or flagella. So that tells us that this must be an amoeba. And that's what it is. So now we've figured out the name of this organism. Now if we were looking at a different organism, we would have to follow um, a dif the different directions based on the answers to each of the questions. But we figured out now that this is an amoeba. Now, the second thing you're going to have to do with a dichotomous key is to be able to write one. So if you're given a set of organisms, like these six organisms here, you need to be able to write a dichotomous key to identify each one of them. So let's write a dichotomous key for these six organisms. We have a bat, a grasshopper, a caterpillar, a mouse, a horse, and a butterfly. So we're going to start out by trying to ask ourselves a question that would split this group in half. So something that half of them have and half of them don't have. And if you look at, um, the bat, the mouse, and the horse all have fur. So let's first ask the question, does it have fur? So that'll be our first question. If the answer is yes, that means that we're talking about the horse, the mouse, and the bat. And if the answer is no, that means we're talking about the butterfly, the caterpillar, and the grasshopper. So it really doesn't matter what number they go to next, um, but since 2 comes after 1, we'll just say that if the answer is yes, then we'll go on to 2. So we're going to narrow this group down. Now we're only looking at these three that have fur, the horse, the mouse, and the bat. We've got to ask ourselves a question that will split this group further into um, into more specific categories. So if we look really closely, we can see that the mouse and the bat both have claws. So if we're trying to distinguish the horse, the mouse, and the bat, we might ask the question, does it have claws? And if the answer is yes, that means we're talking about the mouse and the bat. And if the answer is no, the only one that's left over is the horse. 
So when we get it narrowed down to just one organism, we can actually give it a name. So if the answer is no, we know we're talking about the horse. If the answer is yes, though, we still have two options, so we want to narrow it down further. So we're looking for something that the bat has that the mouse doesn't have. And I would say that the most obvious thing is wings. So our next question might be, does it have wings? And if it does have wings, we know we're talking about the bat. And if it doesn't, we're talking about the mouse. Now don't get confused here, because if you look back up at the original set of organisms, we have both a grasshopper and a butterfly that also have wings. But if we're following our dichotomous key, we would never have gotten to number three, because the answer to number one wouldn't have sent us to number two, which would have sent us to number three. So number three is only talking about the small group of organisms that we're left with, which are the mouse and the bat. It doesn't include the others because those have been eliminated already. So now let's go and deal with those organisms at the beginning that do not have fur. So we're going to deal with the no answer to number one. And this is going to send us to number four, which is just the next number in line. It really doesn't matter what number it is. So we're looking now only at the butterfly, the caterpillar, and the grasshopper. And we're going to ask a question that will narrow these um, down further. So if we look at the number of legs, the butterfly and the grasshopper both have six legs. So let's let that be our question. Number four, does it have six legs? If yes, then we're talking about the butterfly and the grasshopper. And if no, then we're talking about the caterpillar. So we know that the caterpillar is the only one that doesn't have six legs, so we can go ahead and name it. Um, but we need to narrow down the grasshopper and the butterfly. So what's something that the butterfly has that the grasshopper doesn't? And if you've ever touched a butterfly's wing, you know that it has some colored dust on it that you can actually rub off with your fingers if you're not careful. So let's let that be our question. Does it have colored dust on its wings? And if the answer is yes, we know we're talking about a butterfly. And if the answer is no, we know we're talking about the grasshopper. So now we've given a name to all six of our original organisms, and so that's the end of our dichotomous key.